we dishonor all of you that are present, all our evangelists, our ministers and pastors and elders and deacons and lovers of the Lord uh, online. We Recording in progress. All of you. Um, <clears throat> well, today, open up with our uh, 42nd uh, 42nd church anniversary that God has called us for this ministry here. We, I think, uh, co pastor somewhere on somewhere, wherever I heard a voice earlier, uh, but we honor all of you and all you who are listening in from far and near, we are grateful. So, uh, this will mark our 40, the beginning of our 42nd uh, uh, church anniversary. And you know, their, their, their celebration is for a reason. Celebration is not just another day at the park. Celebration is not just coming together to eat or uh, do things. But celebration uh, for me is to focus on a particular turning point uh, for us spiritually in the revelation, uh, turning point of interest, uh, notable in our lives, where uh, in the Bible, Israel, they had a special day to celebrate, uh, too, for the deliverance uh, from Egypt. That was one of their great tasks. And, you know, it, it, you know, you you not only have to be delivered once, you have to constantly be delivered from different things to try to cage you in, in life. You know, uh, and I'm sure all of you is quite aware of that. Uh, we go from one to the next because, you know, the devil's not going to be satisfied every time you get away from him in one area, there's another area. He, according to what we was reading, he come to seek, to, to kill, rob, and destroy, and he never stop. So if he don't stop, that's mean we can't stop. I want to talk about getting loose. That's what I want to talk about from the book of Gideon, you know, the sixth chapter, you focus on that. And... Uh, a point on different things we uh, celebrate in our life. I don't know about you, but you should have something somewhere that you really cherish that is valuable to you and where you, you got loose from a situation. It can be a number of things. Got loose from fear, got loose from bondage, got loose from a circumstances or situation that were nagging you, or, you know, even, even something you may have inherited, got loose from maybe a family tradition or something like that. And, uh, you know, uh, things like that in your life, I'm sure you can recall different things. And so uh, uh, I think it's so great to talk about practical thing. I'm not so religious that I can't, uh, 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 focus or remember from where I come from, remember what used to have me in different areas, and there are many more hills and mountains to overcome. All of you, you know, as we live, uh, we face different challenges in life. Mm -hmm. So I just, if you would focus with me on that, you know, the six of uh, so we are so uh, grateful, you know, and, you know, I, I, I like that theme that we have at the church that a ship in a harbor is safe, but that's not what ships are built for. They're built for sailing. And uh, when God builds a ship, you know, that song, right? I said, like a ship. Uh, that uh, tossed and, and driven by the uh, 
stormy sea, you know, uh, the writer had in mind that we are tossed and driven, you know, uh, uh, by storms in life. And we must, uh, we're able to maintain with God help. And I love that, uh, the song that was played, uh, I've got to have Jesus because I can't make it, you know, by myself. It's good to know that when we rely on him, all God want us to remember to uh, rely on him. And if he rely on him, he won't let us down. Yep. Uh, okay. Let's uh, look at Book of Gideon here, the sixth chapter. Uh, focus with us. We won't be long. We just want to, as far as relevant to life today, let's look at Gideon here. There came an angel, the 11th verse, 11th verse, right? And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Oprah, that pertained unto Joyce the Abba's rights, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the midnight. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him, appeared to Gideon and said, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of Bel. And so Gideon said to him, oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us. In other words, why this is King James Version? Say, why all this is happening to us? Why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracle, which our fathers told us of saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us unto the hands of the midnight. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hands of the midnight. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor and Manasseh and I am the least in my father's house. Uh, I, I just want to, <clears throat> I want to, I want to talk about getting loose. God, yeah, getting loose. Well, the, only the word of God will, will make you free. Only because whom the son of man has set free is free indeed. And Second Corinthians 10 and 4 through 5 say, For the weapon of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold, casting down imaginations and every high things, every high things, positive or negative things high mind and everything like that so and even low mind too you know so you notice when angela uh, speak uh get in response he, he knew it was the lord coming to him so he responds oh my lord and so uh he he speak of his inadequacy inadequacy like i told you we could be tied you know they, my text uh, getting loose we could be tied to our doubt we could be tied to mind too low too low 
We could be tied to ourselves too, you know. You, we, and we got to let go and let God see. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> remember, God had earlier, when you check, God had earlier. See, God, are you, there's some years gap, some time lapse between then and when God told Israel, when you go into the land, get rid of the middle night. Because see, God knew what was going to happen. He said, get rid of everything. Everything. So they didn't do that. So now it come back. Now God wanted to use uh, God wanted to use uh, Gideon in a way here that going to not only not only change the minds or change how we see things but it's gonna let someone know God was able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all we could even ask or even think. Like, uh, you know, and that's, that's, see, God is awesome, powerful. Okay? But then our mindset, see, our mindset has to change. So, uh, we have to think different when we have to rely totally up on God because when God says say things to you, you have to consider them deeply when you 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 have to because when God told the fathers to listen, get rid of everything, the midnight to get see the midnights was standing in God's way. It's hard when you stand in God's way. God's going to chastise you hard when you stand in God's way. Yeah. So God used the same enemy to uh, come to have dominion over Israel like the ch chest. Here, yeah, I told you before, and if you just look up in the up in the verses, when you look up in the verses, you'll see where God uh, sent the prophet to chastise them and to tell them and to warn them, listen, I delivered you out of Egypt. See, 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 that's the same God. And if God able to deliver you from Egypt, he able to able to deliver you personally and from other things. See, as they were God chosen people. See? You, you, you gotta you gotta get loose from a lot of things. There's a lot of things you gotta get loose from. Fast as you get loose from one thing, they're gonna become other things. See, see, our life is just not made up of just of our one thing. There are many things we got to come through. Uh, uh, so uh, getting had to stand in the gap. He told the Lord, say, hey, wait a minute. Me? He, First thing God told him, you die man of Bela. You, 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 in other words, let me try to give you some confidence. I want you. He said, I'm from the weakest of the tribe. I'm the weakest in my tribe, even. My tribe is the weakest, and I'm the weakest in my tribe. You go, yeah. You, you, me, that's a tall order. You leave me alone. Yeah, leave me alone. I'm 
uh, you asking me to do something, you know, you, you, you already, you, you already had the big fellas. You had Moses them, Abraham them, all the other patriarchs, and you gonna, you gonna come to me? My tribe is hardly even mentioned. It's nothing significant about me. So when he, the Lord spoke to him, guess where he was? He was so full of fear, so full of doubt, and he was satisfied just surviving. Amen. Just surviving. No, man. I want to make you somebody. I want to make you uh, more than what you think you is, and that's the way God wants us to think. So when you think in that way, then God got a chance. He know your tank is empty. So he got a chance to put some gas in your tank. If your tank is already full, then you don't need no gas. But then God spoke to him in such a, an appealing way until he had to recognize it. What did he say? In that six? Yeah. The angel come. And then spoke to Gideon, who was stretching the wheat. That was like in a hiding place, a wine press. You don't thresh wheat in a wine press. You don't thresh wheat in a wine press. So, but for the fear of the midnight, see the midnight, see God put them in a place that will actually, the circumstances and situation would just talk to them. And here is Gideon in a place. Now, see, God will pick you out. He'll pick you out to do something. And it doesn't matter what your social or economic status is. God will pick you out to do some stuff. And he'll use the least. He'll use less to do more with. So we will know that God can do anything. He wants to at any time through whomever he choose to use to do it with. Now, if that's a high order here. Looking at it literally, amen. Looking at it literally. And, but but the weapon of our warfare are not carnal. See, yeah. amen. This this kind of hard to receive here. It may not be for everyone, but you have to gear up here. Amen. Empty out your heart and mind. But it's mighty through God. To the pulling down, there was a strong hole. You ever had a strong hole? Something that you're dealing with? Yeah, yeah. Whether admit it or whether you remember it or whether you was aware of it or not. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking common language now. God wanted to bring about an awareness. Uh, he, I bring you out of Egypt, man, and I delivered you, and now you. You got in these places and you get comfortable. I told you things to do way a long time ago. I'm just paraphrasing it now, you know, putting it in common today's language. I told you stuff to do. I told you been to get, get rid of the midnight long time ago. Now, somebody else has to suffer because of what did, didn't do there. That happened, but you have to suck it up. You ain't got no time now to look back there now. Amen. Amen. Time is of essence. Amen. You ever got in a situation where you got to, there's a word we use, you got to, a man got to do what a man got to do. Well, at the time here, uh, Gideon they had no time to look back there in, in the history. 
we got a chance to look in history. We got a chance to make our future brighter by watching history and using these principles as a learning process for our now and our future. We got to get loose from different things. Here's a struggle. Gideon needed to get loose from his fear. Gideon needed to get loose from his doubt. God gave him a tall order. I want you to deliver Israel from the hands of the, of the midnight. Me? Man, you, you asking the wrong party. You know, yeah. See, God's can, God see in you what you don't even see. So God wanted to, he said, you, you mighty man of Bella. You, uh, amen. You, 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 you fearful and you listen to the angel talk to you. You ever, you ever, you ever consider God talking to you through very psalm? You ever consider him talking to you? Didn't God ever talk to you through different things and you couldn't forget it? You couldn't just lay it aside? You had to take heed to see God used great symbolism and great graphic signs to people when he want to deal with them. So he was sifting wheat in there because the midnight would come up and just take what they want. You know, see, now that doesn't mean God not with you. See, God will use something, a situation to awaken you in the least way you will even expect. He will use this why. This is the reason you got to pay attention around you. You got to pay attention to different situations and stuff around you. You got to be vigilant. In other words, being vigilant, we're paying attention. What I mean by that? Watching the hands of God, where God hands at in your life and in society, in the world. God speaks through different situations. Ever who's listening, they will hear. God echoes from heaven still yet. And, and them who hear, they will hear. What is it? So let the church hear what the spirit has to say. Well, it's true. You got to listen. Yeah, amen. Listen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, they was in a very afflicting situation because they had to hide and they oftentimes they didn't have much to eat and what they did get to eat the midnight would come and take it. So, I mean, uh, God allow the same situation to remind them. See, God allow, or either he will allow similar situation to recall your attention back to what he already had told you. you, you, you. God over had you in a class, mm -hmm. class of remembrance, bring you back to things. And that's the mercy of God that he able to bring you back. Mm -hmm. You remember in school, they would give you a chance if you didn't get your lesson during the regular school season. The institutional program, I think uh, Reverend Foster's a principal, was a principal. She retired, and, and I believe they did the same thing too. The kids that didn't get their lesson, they would give them an opportunity and to go to summer school. And I think God does that with us too. He does it with me. <laughs> Man, <laughs> give me back uh, to help me remember and give me the class over again. So remember Gamma? Remember I had you in this and you run across the top of it. So God go to get what he want done. And, God, and Israel was God's chosen people. We got to remember that now. 
show. How can God let a thing like that happen? That's what Midian, that's what uh, Gideon at. You, you, huh? you, God, you let us down. You let all this happen. You let us be in captivity. Amen. Retro, retrospect, looking back, remember that God already told Israel before. Now, when you come into that land, I want you to get rid of. And God had his reason. See? See, God, God had a reason for, for telling, uh, telling Israel to get rid of, get rid of the midnight. Get them out of there. I, I already told you. I told you what to do because I know either three or four things are going to happen. You, you're going to pick up the bad trick from them. Hmm? Are they going to persuade you to start serving idol? See, you got to watch, you know, what he said. You got to watch your environment. You got to watch where you hanging out at. You got to watch who you associate with and stuff. It can oftentimes pull you back. But God is a jealous God. So God used them mid and night. The same midnight that he told them to destroy before, he used them to come back and terrorize them. So he had Gideon, wait a minute, the people I called before, I want to go to the lowest. I want to recover you from the lowest common denominator next to nothing. Well, that's what the way Gideon looked at it. I want to use you. This is why Gideon was so amazed when, when, when the angel told him, spoke to him, God spoke to him through the angel. Said, you know, first thing he wanted to inject some hope. Man, I want you to take your head, if I may speak, I don't want to be so political, take your head out the sand a little bit. Take your head up, hold your head up. I know you're fearful of what's going to happen. I know you want to survive, but no, God is more than just survival. And, and coming into this church uh, 42nd anniversary, amen. I know we're not where we was then, but we come, we, I'm glad we're not where we was then because uh, you know why? Because uh, Hebrews 6 and 1, this tell us, you and I, plainly clear, it, as the King James said, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to maturity, or some translation said to perfection, making some distance between you and your starting point. I'm just glad about it. I am glad. Yes, I'm glad. Amen. Uh, we come from any house uh, to a church house. We come from the bare floor and the bare walls and seat. And the sanctuary is there. In our life, you think back over and see where you come from. Mm -hmm. And those tribe there, them tribe of Israel, they come from a long ways. Yeah, yeah, we come from a long ways. We used to sing a song that we come a long ways uh, leaning on the Lord. And being so fearful, being so terrified, just barely getting food in the mouth. Amen. I have to incorporate it because a sermon, I'd rather see a sermon than to just hear one. Amen. Apart from myself, we come from a long ways. We come from one shoe or no shoe, one pair of garment to now many closet running over. Some people have to clean their closet out now. You've got so much in the closet until you have to go in there and clean it up. You got all these shoes, shoes you hadn't worn in three or four years, shoes you've forgotten all about that you had. But anyway, that's in cooperate into the sermon today. 
but then stronghold we have to pull on. We have to move from glory to glory in the Lord, from glory to glory. God wants us to multiply. He don't want us to stay the same way. God is a God of multiplication, addition. Yeah. Subtracting in a way, taking away the things that not going to get us nowhere. So sure, of course, you're going to subtract that. Uh, better known is uh, take off, taking off and putting on. We got to know what to take off. We got to know what to put on. So God used getting yeah, to, to do something that he, he didn't ask other high up tribe to do. He used the least, in the, the least tribe and the least person in the tribe. Aren't you thank God for Jesus? Aren't you thank God for, for being in your life? Oh, I think I'm for being in mine. Amen. I use a term, most people don't like it. I use the term from plantation to salvation. They say, you're not from no plantation. Well, you only can share a crop on a plantation. Where, you gonna, where else are you going to share a crop at? Exile plantation. Amen. Working from dusk till dawn, uh, uh, one pair of shoe to no pair, garment, you wash it at night, dry it in the, before the fire, have it ready for the next day. I'm talking reality. That's all. I'm just trying to get you to see where God brought you from. And 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 uh, the sixth chapter here. Uh, look where God brought them from, from places, but yet they fall back. He, 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 God is a God. He loved backslider. He married to backslider. I don't care how far you fall. Amen. God arm um, is so powerful. Amen. He can reach from one side of the earth to the other side. Amen. From heaven to earth. That's his glory. He can do that. He's so powerful. Amen. Don't think, don't think God can't catch you if you're falling. Yeah. Amen. And so God loved Israel. He chose them. He used Gideon here. Amen. Amen. To all the people of faith here to win victory. Yeah, to gain victory. And this, this, this God is so powerful and he's so awesome. Look what God can do. God can change circumstances and situations. Look like impossible here. It was impossible to get in. Me? Yes, you. I want you. I want you to go save Israel. I'm going to save Israel. Yes, you. Give them the instruction. Yes. But he had to be assured. You somebody say, well, don't question God. Oh, yes. God wants you to question him. Things I serve a God, I can go to him. I serve a God, I could pray about the same thing more than once. Amen. Somebody said, if you pray more than once, then you don't believe or trust. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not true about me. Not about me. If some I don't understand. I got a God. I can go to him. I can go to God in prayer. I can cry out to him as many times as I want to. So I don't understand. I'm, I serve a God that gives me understanding. He that lack wisdom, let him ask of God, and he'll give something I don't know about. Let me ask. I may sound literate to men, but to God, I'm just right. God wants us. I think sometimes our pride, we have so much pride until we a shame to ask God over and over. We don't understand stuff. I know I'm right about it. Don't let your friends around you intimidate you. Don't let your friends around you box you in a cage until you full, so full of pride. Stop. You, you, Sometimes you better disconnect yourself. You got to disconnect yourself. If you, if you, there's some things if you want from God, you got to dismiss everything around you because so they won't interfere with you you know people got influence over people 
you know people do have influence over people you you got to denounce all that stuff throw it out the window uh, uh this is the case with gideon gideon had to throw everything out the window god satisfy him he went to god and asked god and God, give him the answer and say, I'll be with you. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hey, you, if you're not assured, you can ask God, and God will assure you. Yeah. So I don't want you to box yourself in by your associate or people around you you're connected to. You've got to disconnect yourself. What the scripture said? So you got to steal away. You got to steal away in your secret, secret closet. Steal away. It's you and God. Steal away and go into your prayer closet. When you come out, you want to be renewed because you had a one-on-one, a, -on -one, a close-up one-on-one. And nothing like a refreshing from God. When you get a close-up one-on-one, you come out delivered from yourself, delivered from fear, delivered from insecurity, delivered from inferiority. This is where we come from. Come from some place to some place. Come from the bottom to the top. Amen. What he, what he said, said, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. Yeah. Amen. If you feel like you last on the list, God can make you first on the list. Amen. Praise God by your submission to him. That old enemy, James 4 and 7, said resist, but then to submit first. You can't resist except you submit. You got to submit yourself first to God. Submit to the will of God, and God will help you see straight. You know, you may be cross-eyed now. I don't care if you cross-eyed physically. God will help you see straight. He'll give you a, a new, what is it? a new eyesight and help you to see straight, help you to see things that you couldn't see before. This is what God will do for you. Listen, I, I want you to catch on to this sermon, please, because this sermon will help deliver you from insecurity, amen, and all, all those past situations. Don't base your future on past stuff. If you, you will about your future, what God can do for you. Look what God did for Gideon. God raised Gideon up to a point where Gideon was ruler over Israel for 40 years. A man, the weakest tribe. God will take the less and do so much with it. If you're willing to take the first few step with God by faith. Your faith is the one that's going to do the job. Your faith in God. God, he cherishes our faith. I don't care who you is, what your uh, uh, economic background is. God, God can take you from the bottom to the top. That's what he can do for you. The last shall be first and the first last. If you show your faithfulness, it's your faithfulness to God. They're going to work for you. Your faithfulness to God going to bring you to the forefront. And you, you might have been on the back. He might have been down in the bottom of the wine press, but God pulled him out of there, pulled him to the top. You wouldn't know if you checked the background of him. Amen. Is this the same man that was so fearful down? I mean, so fearful for his life, so fearful, just trying to survive. God get you out of the survival mode. Amen. Are you in survival mode? God don't want you to remain in, in just survival mode. And I'm about true again. Yeah. This is just part one of this situation. I mean, this is what God will do for his mighty people, the people of God. And you'll notice when you finish reading the story, <laughs> amen, what a victory. And take less and do it with. You don't need all what you think you need. And I have to keep telling myself that. You don't need all what you think you need. Amen. Not that trying to, I'm not speaking about playing Lawn Rancher. I, I have an answer for that too. Amen. Amen. But you don't need all the stuff you think. Some stuff will get in your way. <laughs> Amen. Get out of that wine press sifting wheat. That's not where wheat is sifted at in a wine press. But he did it out of his insecurity, out of his fear. Amen. So, Get loose. Get loose from the past. And get loose from things that holding you in your present that you can't move. Amen. This is the 42nd year. 
I ain't where I want to be yet. I'm not where we where I was. We're not there. He blues and lead the principle of the doctrine. Let us go on to uh, uh, maturity. Yeah, amen. So let, don't stay where you was. Somebody say, I'm not what I want to be yet, but I'm not what I was. Amen. And you know, the devil will try to sell you and bring stuff back to your remembrance. Somebody said something to me. Uh, I think my wife uh, was in Florida and she said, I didn't even know it. I didn't even know it. She said, oh my God. She said, the word of God was awesome. I said, well, I didn't know it. I didn't. You got to speak word of God. You got to call those things that are not as though they are. If you keep rerunning, replan, rerunning, replan, call the things that are not as though they are. Keep on speaking the word of God. Guess after a while, they'll take hold of you. What he said, can bitter and sweet water come out the same fountain? That's a personal question. I'm not answering it. You got to answer it for your own self. But I know for me, it don't come out the same fountain. Amen. Because it can't exist. Amen. Either you prescribe to God and fully, or you not. One of the two. I'm going to stop for the, today. Okay. So please get loose. That's what the text was. Get loose. You got to wiggle loose somehow. And God help get in to get loose. God, he get loose from his fear. He get loose from his insecurity. He get loose from being the bottom. Amen. And God put him to the top. He ruled for 40 years afterward. That's amazing. That seemed what impossible to man or what impossible to me. Sometimes you got to point yourself out too. You ever call yourself out? You have to call yourself out. The minute you admit to yourself, where you at, that's when you on your road to victory. That's your first step is calling yourself out. Lord, I, Israel couldn't do, couldn't move until they say, it's our fault. It's our own fault that these calamity has come upon us. And that's exactly what happened here because of Israel. God already bring them from Egypt. God already bring them across. Do cross God already do some magnificent thing, Amen. And what He done, He is God, the same God today as it was that deliver you yesterday. If He deliver me yesterday, then He could deliver me today. God bless you. Thank you. Let's let us pray, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this for this brief opening in our church 42nd year. Thank you for what you've done so much and we can't tell all we just uh, show our gratitude. We understand that our light affliction, which is only but for a moment, but it worketh within us a far more exceedingly and eternal weight of glory while we look at the things which are seen and which is temporal, but the things not seen is eternal. Thank you for blessing us today, your people that will wade in on the sermon, what God has to say. Thank you for letting us consider your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So we thank you today, your people being so considerate of your word. We ask you to bless us, continue blessing us, continue to help us get loose from different situations and circumstances. Bless us, illuminate our hearts and mind, oh God, it's when it seems like we're down in a dumps, oh God, you the one. We are right where you want us, so you can pull us up so we can show our gratitude towards you. So we are grateful how you blessed today and put out many illustrations of your word. We bless somebody, oh God, might, who might be going through a situation, might be going through a slump, might be feeling like they're down in a valley. So oh God, you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly. So we bless your name today. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget, you can help us continue to spread the good news by subscribing to our YouTube channel. 
It's P-I-B-C, Pentecost Inspirational Baptist Church. Like, follow, share, and subscribe. Thank you for joining us. Have a blessed week.